crew, welcome back to another spray castle tutorial. So this is going to be the tools we're going to be using today. This is the infamous soft tip tools and you guys have seen me use these on all my videos, right? So uh, I will provide the links so that you guys can purchase the same tools that I am using for today's tutorial. I also want to show you guys the official spray castle can shaker. This is made by our friends over at MixQuick, mixquick.com. And this is a neat little tool, guys. It hooks up right to your electric saw. And let me show you real quick how easy it is to put, install your cans into it. So you just grab your can, put it into place. You see this right here? This will ensure that you have a nice grip in your cans every time. Look at that. So it won't fly off. Nice and safe. You put this in your electric saw and it'll shake your cam for you. I'll give you a quick little demonstration on one that we've already have set up. And we'll go slow. <laughs> All right, so guys, it's always important to shake your cams before every use. So keep that in mind. So if you guys are ready, grab your spray paints and your tools, let's get started. All right, let's get started. So today we're gonna be using a kind of like a light green turquoise color yesterday we did uh, a hot pink painting so today i thought i'd change it up a little bit and we're going to do the same technique we're just going to go back and forth now i want some of those areas to remain white it gives us a almost like a like a cloud effect look at that you can darken it up make those clouds stand out a little bit more Remember guys, it's always very important to shake your cans before every use. So I'm going to use a little bit of white just to amplify those clouds in the background. Alright. All right, so you guys know I love to create landscapes, right? Um, I can paint anything, I really can. But there's just something about landscapes that I just love doing. So I'm gonna create another landscape today. I'm gonna be using my handy dandy uh, soft tip tool here. And let's create the background. Now I get this asked a lot, do you know exactly what you're gonna paint? No, no, I just begin somewhere and then start from there and see where it takes us. So. I'm gonna create a nice little rocky texture, little rocky terrain. Oh, look at that, I like the way this is coming out. Okay, let's use a little more black. And uh, let's see. So I like this as a main focus point. Maybe we can add something back here. All right. You know what this is starting to look like? I'm thinking that a nice little water wave wants to be born right about there. Yeah, it could be perhaps a little stream. Let me say we help it. I'm gonna add a little bit of white right about there. Let me move this so you guys can see a little bit better what I've got going on. So we're just gonna tap into some white and I'm gonna blend it with the colors that we already have here. I'm going to add a little bit of clear coat so that it blends with the blue that we have underneath. Uh, there we go. Look at that starting to take shape, right? You can also use your finger. Okay. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of clear coat here on the bottom. And you know what? I'm gonna bring it down a little bit further down the paint. Down the painting, I mean. That'll just give us the effect. Nice little water waves. Okay, now this is just the first, the first layer. We're gonna have to keep working at it to make it look a, mere, a little more realistic, a few more layers in between. I'm gonna use a little sea sponge, just gonna tear off a little piece. Right, right there. So with this, we're gonna create grass strands is going into the water. I'm gonna start working on some of the, the plant life layers just so that we get a nice gesture as to what where this painting wants to go. Now I know I say that a lot and I often tell people let the painting paint itself. It'll let you know. After all you're just an observer here. You're helping the, the painting develop itself. Few new little grass strands here. Look at that. I like the way that's coming out. All right. So with our sea sponge, I did a little bit of plant life. Now you guys know I like to make the plants go into the water. Just like that. Now you can always go back and do tap, 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 just to add a little bit of flowers. Could be flowers, could be seed pods, could be many things. All right. See those little dots? Okay. Now. I couldn't find one of my funnels, so I made one. I just used some cardboard and some duct tape. And if you guys want to know how do I make these, there's definitely a couple videos on my YouTube channel that I show you how. So this is pretty much a virgin funnel. Look at that. Never been used. So we'll get to try it today. Now notice the edge. I usually cut it at a 45 degree angle. That helps me control the flow of the paint. So if I want a big three, a tree, I just let the paint come out if I want. Smaller ones, I just tie it up and let it come out. So, let's give it a try, all right? We're gonna create some trees here. I'm gonna make our first one. Okay, we're gonna use our turquoise again. So as you can see these paintings, I'm using um, kind of like a two-tone, right? We're going maybe a three-tone. We're going from black to white to uh, whatever color we choose to make our primary. In this case, it was turquoise. It could be hot pink, blue. I just wanna show you guys that you guys don't need a big variety of colors to make something that's captivating. Besides, you know, sometimes I like to challenge myself and I'll limit myself on purpose uh, on just basic colors to see, well, you know, what can, what can I come up with using just basic, basic colors. And so, you know, you can see the end result always pays off because it makes it look like it could be a distant planet. So tap, tap, I'm just tapping on top of these little plants here. 
And look at that. We managed to create some flowers. Tap into this. Now, if you want it to really stand out, you can add some white to it. And what that'll do, oh, don't forget to always shake and pre-spray your cans before every use. Now then, we have, we've created our background, uh, we've created some plants here in the distance, uh, you know, we added some grass strands throughout our painting, a little bit of shadowing going on here on, on, on the bottom of, of, our, of our terrain, uh, basic, basic highlights to our painting. Now, obviously guys, I've always said that they will lies in the details, with that being said, you can make a painting this quick and be able to sell it, uh, you know. But if you're like me, then you want to add some more details to it. I mean, eventually, guys, the more you input into anything, the more you can create with it. So we're going to now jump into our rubber tip tools. So if you guys want to know and get a set just like the one that I have, uh, the links are provided below. Or you can go to my website and get them there let's get started I'm gonna I'm going to remain using the same color that we've been using and that is that turquoise color now with this fine tip brush I tap into this and as you can see you can create leaf details or and I'll do it on this side right here. You can add some highlights to your terrain. It's a very versatile tool and it can create some amazing So, we've gone through, we've added some highlights, right, using our soft tip tool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sunburst. So, we're going to get our white. Let me uh, practice here first, okay. There you go. What we can do is you grab a spread edge and you can create sun rays. So... Uh, you know what? Let me grab something a little sturdier, something like this. So if you guys are looking for straight edges, you can go to my website and take a look at the ones that I use there. Or, you know, you can improvise. Look at that. It gives it a nice little sunburst. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade the background just a little bit, quick bursts, just so that I can fade a little bit more. So that when I come in and start adding some additional layers, they'll be darker. You'll see what I mean. Now then, we have our background. I want to start adding some layers that are closer to us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, you know what, using a little bit of black. I'm gonna start in my sea sponge. Just tear a new piece. I'm gonna start adding a terrain that is closer to us. Here, I'll show you. Tap, 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 tap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on top of some of these layers, and that's okay. 
your terrain tends to grow and as it grows and it starts developing and taking shape you gotta be willing to take shape with it let me add a little more black here I'm gonna create this little terrain here you guys remember how to do this right it's gonna create the shape of it. Then using our black, we're just gonna fade it in. Okay, just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna use the funnel that we were using earlier. Spray some black into it. And I'm gonna create some overlapping silhouette trees. Now I want this next one to be a little bit darker. So, and because it's closer to us, I'm going to make it thicker as well. To make it thicker, you just have to go over it a few times. See how this is starting to take shape? All right, now you guys remember what I did earlier, right? A little bit of black here on the side. Handy dandy sea sponge. We're just gonna tap into our black. And start creating a silhouette layer of some of these grass strands that are closer to us. So I'm gonna make them bigger. And I do want them to overlap some of the, uh, the layers that are in the background. to do okay now here on the bottom just gonna add that make some black right there okay add a little bit more Tap, 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 tap. Again, I want to overlap some of the texture, some of the, the terrain in the background. This will just make it a little more realistic. Okay, so I'm just going to come over here and tap on top of these little grass strands. Look at that. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, we're gonna do this one right here. And right here. Okay, you know, the more I'm looking at this, I'm gonna add some more black. I'm gonna make a tree a little bit closer to us and right on top of that so now we're overlapping several layers right we're overlapping the new silhouette layer that we added as well 
as the existing layer that we added, our background. Now I know there's going to be some areas like here on the bottom where you really can't tell exactly what the tree is doing and that's okay because we can always come back with some highlights and add more definition to the tree. Okay. So now that we've created uh, the branches, all the tree barks that we have here, we added some minor highlights in the background. We're gonna come through once again with our turquoise color and we're just gonna add some details to some of this plant life that is closer to us. This is a, a very easy technique, very easy to do. Tap, tap, tap. And you'll see it will make a big difference. So I like to just go around like this and it'll make it look very random. Uh, like there's a brush in the back, right? Lots of leaves, lots of uh, branches. It'll add to the effect that we're looking for. Also, don't forget that you can always, always use your sea sponge. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can find a good one. Ah, uh, this is this is good enough, I think. Just gonna tap, 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 tap. I'm just gonna come through and look at that. Fill in some of those gaps. put some down here as well and look here you can separate these two pieces of terrain very simply just by adding some plant life here and leaving a little space between and see it makes it look like there's two two different uh, terrains just gonna tap here tap 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 Look at that. Now if you want, you can also use the grass technique here. And there you guys have it. Now, we can also add just a little bit, a little bit of white. Look how easy it is to clean these tools and look how dirty my hand is. <laughs> well, they go hand in hand. A little bit of white here. You can always come through and add your water ripples. Now, I know sometimes it's a little bit more difficult than other times to do. That's okay. You can always use a, a bigger broad end brush to do this and that'll give you more uh, more spray paint on your canvas and you can always come through here and look at that add more to it and that's how you create your water lines guys very easy to do as you can see and there you guys have it another spray castle masterpiece in just a few minutes let's take a look at it now you can always go back and add more details but now you know how to do something like this in just a few short minutes so you can always go to the back uh, your media is your poster board medium is our spray paint today's date is 7 3 2022 you guys know my name Great Caso. And I'll think of a title for this later. But there you guys have it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Until next time, guys, keep those cans shaking. And if you shake them, remember our friends over at Mix Quick will help you shake them. All right, crew, until next time. Later, guys.